This time a group of physicists say they've proved that the universe needs only one fundamental constant. <sighs> Now, I really like Sabine Hossenfelder's physics channel. She calls out the nonsense. She's very outspoken, does not mince worth. She has great merits in revealing the scandals, say, in particle physics. She does a great job and she's very knowledgeable in many fields. But let's say, while discussing that paper, what she says about fundamental constants is not exactly thought out. So as sometimes you need a friend to tell you the truth, I take the liberty to correct some of the misconceptions here. In this channel, I do my best to give you a non-BS perspective on fundamental physics as practiced one century ago versus what they tell you today is fundamental physics. So leave me a like and hit the subscribe button if you enjoy the video. And to be fair, if we talk about fundamental constants, there is much nonsense out there which is published. And before I start criticizing, I want to just give you a very brief recap of all what you need to know about fundamental constants. Number one, fundamental constants are messages of nature. Everything that prompts you to ask why this value and not another. And we ought to worry about these values because explaining a fundamental constants was usually a scientific revolution. As in 1857, Kirchhoff and Weber and later Maxwell discovered that the speed of light is related to the electric and magnetic constants. Wow! The inside light is an electromagnetic wave. That triggered the revolution, maybe the most consequential one for human civilization. And number two, yes, physical units are important because Kirchhoff and Weber pondered about that. And so did Niels Bohr when he discovered quantum mechanics by noting that the angular momentum of the electron orbiting the nucleus is related to age, the famous constant discovered by Planck and rightly interpreted by Einstein. And last not least, yes, the less constants you have, the better the physics is, because history has proven that simple theories prevail on the long run. But back to that paper Hossenfelder talks about, it's based on this paper, which is, I think, the dumbest publication ever published by three CERN physicists just babbling about constants without having a clue of anything. And their basic claim is, we don't need to worry about dimensionful constants. Okay, so Maxwell and Weber were just blockheads back then when they discovered this fundamental coincidence? Give me a break. Well, let's say the three CERN guys would certainly not have revolutionized modern civilization, probably not even invented the wheel. And they kind of mix up everything, what a definition is and what a constant is. And yes, I hate to say, but unfortunately, that's what Sabina learned from them. From the cesium atom, you get a measure of time. Once you have time, you can use the speed of light to measure distances and then Planck's constant to measure masses and energies. These three fundamental constants could be different ones, but it seems that we need three. She calls the time standard a constant of nature. No, this cesium line is not a message of nature, it's a human definition of time. It's like saying, oh, the colors of a traffic light are red, yellow and grass. These string guys are just high. If you think about units and constants, yes, what you can do is look at what Max Planck found out. He showed that the units of length, time and mass can indeed be derived from three constant, but it's h, c and the gravitational constant, please. So forget about your time standard, but these guys go ahead with their preposterous nonsense in saying that. All of physics, they say, everything we've ever measured can be explained by this one constant. It's the only thing we need to explain everything we have ever measured. Really, haven't we measured the fine structure constant? Does it explain that? Nobody has explained the proton electron mass ratio. Derek pondered for 10 years about that problem. And here's what Richard Feynman said about the unexplained number 137. All good theoretical physicists put this number up on their wall and worry about it. I'm not sure these string guys haven't even heard about this number. Yeah, and then she shows some strange admiration for the string sect. 
Maybe strings will do away with the necessity for the time standard after all. Yeah, maybe strings one day will explain everything, but. As Moline says, maybe it's also the worst squandering of human intelligence in history. So by Sabine's standards, I would give this paper a 10 out of 10. Literally everything in this paper is either nonsensical or absolutely trivial, such as you can express an energy with a length or a time. But that was published in a book 25 years, no, 30 years ago by Julian Barbour. Read this book. It's a very profound reflection on the nature of time. Please try to get a little bit of background on constants of nature. And if you want to dig a little bit deeper, well, one thing is Planck's units, but this might not be the end of the story or the most smart approach. But there is no doubt that we have a lot of unexplained physical constants of nature. Some of them are indeed dimensionless, like the fine structure constant 137 and the proton electron mass ratio, but not all of them. Remember Maxwell and Weber holding C to the electric and magnetic constants? That was a revolution. These constants were dimensionful, and so are G, H, and C. And that's why I argued that the next revolution, a proper theory of gravity, must explain the gravitational constant. But this is not the end of the story. Unfortunately, there is still much to understand about the universe. We have to explain numbers like the mass and the radius of the universe and also the size and mass of elementary particles such as the proton. It's our damn job as theoretical physicists to explain these numbers and find equations which link them. So it's an interesting approach to watch out for numerical coincidences as Paul Dirac did in 1938. But indeed, whatever progress you make, whatever fantastic theory you come up with, there will remain always two constants, C and H, which cannot be explained by numerical coincidences. But this has nothing to do with defining meters or seconds and all that stuff of definitions. It's misleading. The very existence of C and H is a fundamental problem related to space and time, as I pointed out in my book, The Mathematical Reality. Space and time might indeed be an illusion, or we need to come up with something better than this very simple model. And yes, these are the big questions of physics, the nature of mass, space and time. Questions that, by the way, also bothered Einstein. So Sabine, Please don't just play with your Einstein doll. For a physics channel, you should be interested in the writings of Einstein. And a good point to start is Ilse Rosenthal Schneider's fantastic book about a conversation with Einstein, where he expressed his opinion about constants of nature, saying that arbitrarily chosen numbers do not exist. We should continue wondering about this. So please read old books, not modern papers. Thanks for listening. Leave me a like and subscription.